Hey, Billy, you know what's awesome, man? What's that, man? Christmas holiday TV specials. Most of the time, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> I used to live for those. Remember? Oh yeah. Like for for, for 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 the uninitiated out there, or for probably for the initiated. Back in the day, TV was like three or four channels. Like living in Houston, we we had three major TV stations: so ABC, NBC, CBS, and we had the the UHF, which <laughs> is an entire movie, the ultra high frequency. So we had twenty six and thirty nine, twenty twenty six and thirty nine. And uh, those were the, like, the CW, what is, you know, that, that kind of upper end of the dial. And then you'd flip higher, and then every now and then you'd find, like, an AM radio station broadcasting. <laughs> or, like, it would be in Spanish or Japanese or something. <laughs> it's like, the, the TV back in the day was just like a radio dial. you flip it, and sometimes it would work, and sometimes it wouldn't. But yeah. most of the time, you had your shows. And then every now and then you'd hear that little da -da 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 Yep. You're like, oh yeah, it's Christmas time. <laughs> <laughs> it's on. <laughs> but yeah, man, it's it's amazing how now you kind of see them and they're on TV and it's just kind of a passing thing. But so many of these shows were the world stopped so you could watch Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer. Mm hmm. You know? And like you said, it wasn't, you didn't have, even at that point, you didn't even have really, in my time, VHS or any of that stuff till you know, a little later on. And you sure weren't going to get it, going to get Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer on VHS. You well, know? even if you did, you weren't going to watch it. Yeah. I mean, like, unless your parents were like, hey, it's movie night, here's Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, but nobody was going to throw that, like, even if it was available. Yeah. That that's that wasn't how that worked. Yeah, and it's it's easy access now because you can pull it off your shelf or just go to YouTube and watch the thing or whatever. And but back in the day, it was a it was a spectacle. It was just as it was just as Christmassy as Christmas morning. Mm -hmm. Well, and they didn't play it multiple times, right? Either, yeah. It, you know, again, they, like <laughs> Christmas now is a couple of months. It starts. Yeah, about a week before Halloween, <laughs> and then and then it just you, know, you go to the store. But it didn't it didn't really used to be that way. Like Chris, Christmas was Christmas. You had December, and so as, as a kid, even even as a little kid, you know, you had letters to Santa and like. And I realized that as a kid, time moves slower than as a grown up. So it might have been, but you you weren't six weeks out. You weren't eight weeks out right. from from the big day. You were probably like two to three weeks out, and they started playing these Christmas specials moving yeah. into the uh, into the time. So when they played that show, that was the sh that was the year that like <laughs> that was your one time to catch it in the year. That's it. Because um, they didn't they didn't replay these things over and over and over again like they do now. Right. It was like, well, Frosty's on. Yeah. You, you want to watch it this year? Then take a bath. <laughs> like, well, crap i guess i'm taking a bath <laughs> so. no. and, and of course all of your you know of course i grew up in the time of you know donnie and marie osmond and Sonny and Cher. they all had these tv shows and they would do christmas specials as 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 well and even that was a special event just to you know to to see tv shows that were kind of catering to that at the time and you know, it's just, it was such a part of the celebration. And like you said, it was two or three weeks leading into it, which from kids' logic, I mean, we look at it now, we go, man, two or three weeks, we're we're three weeks away from the week of Christmas right now. It's just like, holy smokes, you know. Well, I wasn't supposed to say that because we're actually, you know, when the show comes out, it'll be a little later than that. <laughs> right. <laughs> But, it's okay. We, we we always say it on Scary Dad, we're time travelers. Right, time we're travelers. About stuff that happened like <laughs> weeks ago. <laughs> but uh, but you got to remember kid logic too, because a day when you're 
eight years old is a week to us now. <laughs> mm-hmm. Especially when there was a Christmas tree full oh, yeah. of presents. Oh, yeah. And you'd shake them. You'd shake those <laughs> presents and you'd think, okay. <laughs> like, for, for me, like, I, I'm always, you know, optimist, pessimist, somewhere in between. Like, you shake it and it's like, it could be You're the right. G.I. Joe Jet. <laughs> yeah. it, could, it, it could also be not that. <laughs> right. like, could, it could be clothes. Like my, my mom bought me a new Sunday best suit. Like that would not be fun. <laughs> but it's just like my mom to put it in a big old box like that, right? <laughs> oh so, man, yeah. The, the man, whole the idea time, of the time of, goes so slow. The whole idea like, of when, giving your kids stuff that they actually need versus what they want. <laughs> who who come up with that philosophy? <laughs> Great, I can use another pair of jeans. <laughs> Man, this tells you how spoiled, like spoiled kid, but just spoiled mentality. I read these stories about you know Christmas, like the original Christmas, you know Saint Nicholas that yeah. you know drag. He didn't have reindeer. He's dragging his sleigh and like <laughs> going through the cold to deliver like apples to children or put oranges in their shoes. And I'm like, you wake up Christmas morning and you have an orange in your shoe. <laughs> <laughs> that, that does not sound like a good Christmas morning to me. Heck, I thought it sucked that he just had an orange in my stocking. <laughs> right? Like, like well. Man, that's room, to realize, that's room you could have had a Snicker bar in there, but no, you gave me, a, exactly. you gave me an orange. <laughs> you got a whole bag of those in the kitchen. I don't need another orange. <laughs> what were you thinking, Santa? <laughs> oh, so yeah, so, man. Yeah, man. When, oh, when, when the when 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 that when that special, and I'm gonna I'm gonna cut that in a few minutes ago. Yeah. Whenever I first mentioned it, but for me there was that swirling. Oh yeah. Da 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 Yep. Special on the news. <laughs> on the news, they'd actually say that your shows are not going to be seen tonight, so we can bring you a very special presentation. Yeah. So what, whatever happened to be on, like the love boat will not be seen tonight. So we can bring you Frosty the Snowman or <laughs> Rudolph or whatever. <laughs> but as a kid, that little da dun da dun da dun da dun like you remember that old uh, advertisement for Memorex where the dude's sitting in the chair Absolutely. And he's listening to the to the tape and it's like blowing his brains out the back of his head. Yeah. That's what that little special thing was for me. It's like, oh, yeah. it's Christmas special time. Right. <laughs> like, Y'all shut up. This is for me specifically. Uh-huh. <laughs> and the parents were not impressed. The parents were just like washing dishes, talking on the phone to the aunt. And yeah. like, how was your day, honey? You're like, shh. <laughs> Burl Lives is talking. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> Yeah, and what's funny is, silly us, our parents grew up watching these too. I mean, you oh, know, yeah. these these were old, <laughs> you know? Yeah, they were. <laughs> but again, because because you only saw them once a year, you didn't get tired of them. And, you know, uh, yeah, I mean, it, it's funny because just two nights ago, we actually watched one. We'll talk about it in a minute. But yeah, man, there, there's still something... That just uh, brings out the kid in you when you when you sit and watch these because I remember as a kid just watching these not only you know because it was Christmas time and it was this special for for kids or whatever but trying to figure out how they made this show because <laughs> you could mm-hmm. see wires for puppets you could see you, you knew it was you didn't know what stop motion really was as a kid you just knew it was something different. <laughs> It's mm-hmm. not a cartoon, but it's not real either. You know, you couldn't really figure it out. And I think that's one of those things like the analytical mind versus maybe the empathetic mind. But we talked about uh, Jim Henson a couple episodes ago mm-hmm. and how, like, whenever I'd see the bars sticking into the bottom of the yeah. puppet's hands. Like as a kid, I'd, I'd wonder if that hurt. Like I, I like they were real to me, <laughs> right? And I, I mean, I'm not trying to be weird or horror, right? Thoughts, but just like, okay, so dude's got a stick hanging out the bottom of his arm. What's up with that? Like <laughs> that, that can't feel good. 
<clears throat> because the what they were doing with those sticks was so realistic that it brought the character to life. Yeah. And, and so again, you know, I'd see strings or I'd see that 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 smoke and mirrors would fall away for a second and you'd see the man behind the curtain. For me, it's it's always been keep that curtain closed. I really yep. don't want to see. I'd rather have the the wonder. Yep. I'd rather not know <clears throat> Years and years ago, I worked with a guy, and I've probably told this story a thousand times, maybe not on this show, but I worked with a guy who was a sleight of hand magician. He was an amazing sleight of hand magician. He could do coin tricks and rubber bands, and he could do all kinds of really cool stuff right in front of you. Yeah. Like no curtains, no smoke, no mirrors, no hats, just with his hands, a coin or a rubber band, and he would just do things yeah. that would just blow your mind. And I would be like, oh, man, show me how to do that. And he'd tell me, he's like, well, you play guitar, right? I'm like, yeah. He's like, how much do you practice? I was like, a lot. He goes, you have to practice this a lot in mm -hmm. order, like, the, the trick is simple, but once it's revealed, yeah, you're never going to be able to see the magic in it. So unless you're mm -hmm. going to become a magician and, and practice it and make it, all you're doing is ruining it for yourself. Yeah. And I was like, okay, cool. Then I accept that explanation and I will just continue to be amazed because I didn't want to lose that little piece of the magic. I'd yep. just rather be like, whoa. Yep. Um, and that goes so, along with these shows too, man. Like you said, it it was a magic because you watch these in, in, in just complete awe as a kid because, again, it was foreign. I mean, because you didn't really have a lot of shows that had stop motion in it. But it kind of ruins it when you find out that <laughs> how it was done, you know. Exactly. Yeah, that's that's a good that's a good analogy on that. I like that. <laughs> well, uh, like what what's on your list? Like what was your favorite one? Like what's the one you look forward to whenever you heard that little specials man, coming up? I it's, mean, it's Tuesday night. Yeah. <laughs> <It's time. laughs> you know, I, I don't. Obviously, we already talked about this on the Jim Henson episode, but my favorite Christmas show, bar none, even over a Christmas vacation, I love Emmett Otter's Jug Band Christmas, which is legit puppets. Mm -hmm. Didn't really come on TV. I saw it on HBO. But for me, that's the one. Now, all of you that check out the You Know What's Awesome Facebook page and stuff, you've seen where I put clips of some of the songs and stuff from that special on there. I just... I don't know, man. That one's just near and dear to me, man. I've always appreciated that movie because, you know, it, it's it's not about really about Santa. It's not about, you know, it's about people struggling to make it through Christmas, you know. And giving. And giving, absolutely. Yeah, giving to be together. Yep. Um, and then a kick-butt rock band. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Oh. But yeah, man, that, but, that that's my favorite. Yeah, we mentioned again. We mentioned it before. Like I, I remember that. I, I don't know that it was ever on TV. It might have been maybe too long or something. But it was definitely on HBO. Yeah, it was certainly alongside like Fraggle Rock in that mm -hmm. time period. But um, like Jim Henson and Ann Crew. Because it's not just him. He, right. He surrounded himself with, with wonderful people. Yeah, he did. But just, just like with the sticks coming out of the arms, just but their attention to detail and their ability to really draw the, the heart and soul out of these characters yeah. and make it real. Yeah. And just like you say, the, the Emmett Otter is more or less the gift of the Magi. That's the story. Yeah, like, right. You know, he's, he's trying to buy his mom – the, but he ends up putting a hole in the wash tub so that. Right. You know, but that's how she makes her money, and then it just. She goes, sells. She goes, sells the tool chest in order to to try to get the guitar for him, and you know. So yeah. So so it's it's a sweet but classic gift of the Magi story, but I mean you've got these essentially stuffed toys. Yeah. That are just being shaken around by sticks and strings, and it affects you for your entire life yeah. i mean it's a puppet show but it matters yeah and dude i'm right there with you yeah. like it's <laughs> I, always, 
Yeah, I always loved the the the, the jug band. <laughs> I always <laughs> felt that he got so gypped. Although, like as a grown up, you're like, I can totally see why he didn't win. Like the, the I mean, <laughs> the other just band a, was. It's just the fact that it's not necessarily that they went up against the rock band. It's the fact that that dude came out with the banjo with the handlebar mustache and sang their song before they got a chance to do it. That's yeah. what ruined the whole thing. <laughs> the funny thing is, like the people writing that have to be like, man, that guy just came out and did my act. <laughs> like, I'm just like I'm writing this into the story, like this because that happens. Yeah. Oh yeah. You know. Yeah. <laughs> As a guitar player, you know that like every now and then you're like, well, well, I was talking to you. I was talking to you, man. I've been playing guitar. I've been playing my ass off. My fingers are are like, like shredded up and bleeding. Yeah, I've I've been playing Hendrix and Floyd, and you're like, I've been playing Doc, and I'm like, jeez, <laughs> <laughs> like, okay, well, and also thanks because that guitar is not your first instrument, so like that's <laughs> like, well, there you go. <laughs> I but, didn't say I was playing it good. <laughs> I mean, we're talking about George Lynch here, so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's funny you bring up uh, bring that up because <laughs> I'm like, okay, we're getting way off the Christmas thing, but I have a, I have a guy at work that's a huge Dockin fan, and one year for Christmas, I made him <laughs> a picture of a Christmas tree, and I took a picture of Dockin. I made him a sign for Christmas that says, Dockin around a Christmas tree. <laughs> 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 oh, but people didn't tune in to hear that. They tuned to hear what kind of Christmas specials we like to watch. <laughs> All right, well, what you got, Billy? You know, well, you know the stop motion, the the Frosty and the Rudolph. As a kid, I sat there and watched them just completely in trance. You know, the Island of Misfit Toys and all that. Yeah, and and they were they're good. They're like, but. Like we mentioned at the beginning, like at some point I ended up with a DVD of these and I was trying to show my kids and my kids were not interested. And it's weird because I kind of also wasn't yeah. like the stories and the story's a little bit over long. Um, it was it, it without the commercial breaks mm -hmm. and kind of the Christmas vibe that goes with everything. The. Like Misfit Toys is sad. Yeah, it is. <laughs> dude gets, yeah, I mean, it's it's not an uplifting story. It's, it's just kind of like dude gets his <laughs> butt kicked a lot and then gets kicked out of town, and then has to fight his way back among all of the other like broken toys. It's just like this is, and, and <laughs> believe me, I'm 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 all about like some tough love and like. You know, yeah. go outside and get your blood running and stuff. But man, that's that's a sad story. Yeah, uh, Frosty, Frosty the Snowman, same thing. I mean, it's a good story, but it's not just like doesn't heart bubble me like it used to when I was a well, kid. Well, sure, yeah. Well, you know these these things were made in a time period where kids actually had an attention span too. I mean, <laughs> that's true. And now it's like. They're talking too much, so I'm not interested. I mean, it's it's it really has gotten to that, and and I'm not saying the better way. The old days are better. It was just a different different generation, and we were the tail end of that. Yeah. But but it, you know, like again, it just signified that time of year when these things came on. I I'll be honest with you. I almost said Rudolph is my favorite because I do love that one as well because of. The Abominable Snowman, <laughs> Yukon Cornelius. I mean, well, that one, that one, <laughs> that one. I mean, there's the the Island of Misfit Toys, and then there's this the Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer. There's two different ones. Um, one of them, they just browbeat this poor kid into the dirt. Oh yeah, <laughs> and they're just like. Mm. Uh, and you uh, had you, know. you had the elf that wanted to be a dentist, mm -hmm. you know, and that's, that's the Island of Misfit Toys. Island, yeah. yeah, but yeah, man, the Abominable Snowman, which <laughs> which which now could be played by Vince Neil. <laughs> <laughs> <You're> really? <good. laughs> oh man! 
I've never showed you that picture. I have to send you a picture, man. Dude. I've got one where they're side by side. <laughs> You, you didn't need to. You said it, and I had to think for a second. I'm like, oh my god. Yeah, you think of how he looks. How he looks here, here lately, man. I mean, he looks just like he looks just like a bottle snowman. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> okay, I, I know. Like, I'm not a big fan of the Jim Carrey uh, movies. I'm like the yeah, but how how the Grinch stole Christmas is still yeah. good. Oh, yeah. It, in, in the internet age, when people are trying to psychologically analyze the Grinch and be like, oh, well, it's this. No. It's a, it's, it's a Dr. Seuss story. Yeah. It's not that long. It doesn't, you know, it's, it's all about just being happy and giving and understanding that it's not about you and in, in the world. <clears throat> but... Man, my mom will tell me, if my mom was in here on this microphone right now, she'd be like, Billy used to cry whenever he would spank that dog. Like when he'd whip the dog, like yeah. he'd tie the little reindeer yeah. with a stick to his head. Yeah. Like, dude, when I was a kid, that just drove me nuts. Sure. Like if you, yeah, that dog's not big enough to pull your sleigh. If you need it, just <laughs> to cut the dog loose and just push it and hop back on and roll it down like a sled. Uh, and <laughs> just the fact of when he gets everything pounded, you know, and you're expecting this little dog to pull the sled. <laughs> uh, yes, yeah, it's, it's Dr. Seuss doing, you know, the Scrooge in a, in a strange kind of way, right? I mean, the Scrooge is the, the legendary story as well, and it's just kind of his weird take on, you know, what that can turn into. And, of course, it kind of ends just like Scrooge as well, you know. Presents for everybody. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Merry Christmas. <laughs> uh, so, so uh, again, spe spe special place in my heart yeah. because my my little one, who is about man, almost ten. Wow. Which I'm still, and you know, if you've got a you've got a grown one with grandchildren. Yeah. You know, you still you. When you see your daughter, either faces she makes, certain things that happen, you're looking at her and you're like, you just see her as like a three-year-old or a two-year-old or a 12-year-old. Like, there's yep. just, just certain things that just knock you back. And it was, it was a Christmas Eve. She, I was sitting around reading. I wasn't. <laughs> this was before phone scrolling, so I was probably reading a book or, you know, reading a newspaper or a magazine or something. And it was Christmas Eve, and she came in just like this big, with a little curl in the front of her head, and she's like, Daddy, I'm thirsty. And dude, it was like the Grinch, where it's just like, oh. And her name's Juliet. Yeah. And her middle name's Louise, so I call her Julie Lou Who. Ah. I'm like, oh, little Julie Lou Who, let me get you a glass of water. She's like, what are you doing? I'm like looking around <laughs> trying to wake herself up. I'm like, nope. <laughs> Shut yourself down. We're going like, to pick you up, put you in bed because, you know. Yeah. But, yeah. So that's that's one memory that, for me anyway, that I have completely just tied in with the Grinch. And we'll talk about it next week on Christmas Memories of just, like, taking this sleepy child <laughs> in her little nightgown and picking her up putting her in bed and being like, nope, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm totally not throwing the Christmas tree up the, up the chimney. <laughs> <laughs> Don't look at that. <laughs> but, <laughs> but yeah, so yeah, the Grinch, the, the Grinch, uh, I don't like the movies as like, eh, but the show yeah. holds up to me. Yeah, it's classic. It's classic. I mean, and that's kind of what we're talking about here. The one we watched the other night, which is not as popular, but it's Nestor. You remember Nestor, the the, the donkey. So came out. So, yeah, it, it uh, uh, Roger Miller did the narration for it and did the songs. Okay. And it's about a little donkey had extra long ears, and everybody laughed at him. It's just it's just like the Rudolph story. And uh, you know nobody would play with him, and he would trip over his ears all this time. And his mama took care of him. Well, this guy that owns him. You know, claims that he's good for nothing. Well, these Roman soldiers come in needing some some animals, and he tries to sell them the donkey. 
I my daughter watched that on Netflix a yeah. while, like last year probably. Yeah. And he ends up I'm, getting he kicks the donkey out out on his own. And then the mama breaks out and goes protects him, and she dies out in the wilderness, hovering over him. She dies from the freezing cold, and he's on his own. You know, and my my wife is like. You know, as soon as I said, "Hey, you want to watch Nestor?" She said, "No, that'll make me cry." <laughs> <laughs> but he ends up being the donkey that gets picked to carry Mary, mm. you know, to to Bethlehem, and that's kind of the story around all of it. So, even though he, I, I think I, I had the same, I had the same response as your wife. My kid was watching. I was like, "Dude, what are you watching? This is the saddest show." <laughs> ever. Yeah, it is. I mean, it's it's heartbreaking, but you know, it's 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 you know. It's the, the it's the black swan, right? I mean, it's you know the ugly duckling story, mm-hmm. and uh, you know Rudolph's the same thing, right? You get this abnormality, but ends up being your gift, and you know same thing with Nestor. He he was able to hear things out in the wilderness, and there was a big snow uh sta- sandstorm blowing, and they couldn't see where they were going, but he could hear, you know, the the right direction to go, so. He was part bad, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, there are several versions of it, but my one of my favorite was uh, Mickey's Christmas Carol. Oh yeah, the one, the one from the eighties where Uncle Scrooge mm-hmm. is Ebenezer Scrooge. There are others where it's a different whole situation or whatever, but this is the one where you have Uncle Scrooge yeah. is Ebenezer and Mickey is Bob Cratchit. Mm-hmm. And, <clears throat> you know, it's Donald is uh, completely out of character for himself because he's the one that shows up like all in happy mood, like it's Christmas and Uncle Scrooge <laughs> kicks him out. And stuff. But, it is a really, really good rendition of the story, mm. and I've always loved it. And uh, that's one of those that actually did, I think, play more than once or twice on, on basic cable. You could see it on TBS or something. And I remember watching that a lot when I was a kid and being like, this is awesome. I love that old Disney animation, yep. especially from the like late 70s to like the late 80s where – Yes, they re- they reused a lot of footage. Yeah. But then if you ever saw what it took for them to make mm-hmm. <laughs> a second of footage. Right. If they had a few seconds to string together and they could just color things over and like, I, I, I'm okay with that. Yeah. Because, I mean, that's hard. What, what do you expect? That's why they invented compute. Like, yeah. <laughs> people don't under, <laughs> people don't think like, oh, they invented computers for X, Y, and Z. No, they invented computers to make yep. animation and video easier because it was hard and expensive. Yep. So, but yeah, Mickey's Christmas Carol is for me always going to be one of the. It's a great one. I have to watch it at least once, probably two or three times during the holiday season. And holiday season for me starts. Again, about a week before Halloween. So <laughs> <laughs> I usually try to hold off till Thanksgiving, and then it's like, all right, it's on, right? Yep. But uh, uh, speaking of animation, and you brought it up on ago, but you know, Frosty the Snowman is a surprise in a way when you look at it and you see what year it was made. You go, you know what? This animation for that time period is pretty dang good. Mm-hmm. Being that it wasn't Disney, I mean, you couldn't compare it to Disney, but still, for a thirty-minute long, you know, animated thing, is pretty good. Now, the other side of that is when the nineties, when they decided to make the return of Frosty the Snowman. Uh huh. Man, it looks like Mike Judge made this thing. <laughs> I mean, it's, <laughs> it's we. Were, it was on the other night, and I was like, these songs are terrible. This artwork is terrible. <laughs> I mean, you got John Goodman as the voice of the snowman, but that's about the only good quality it had. <laughs> it's terrible. Well, it, that, it, I, I think that's what you said at, at the beginning of the show was, yeah, maybe in the late 
70s and early 80s, maybe we were getting a little bit jaded to the show. But that show, like, our parents had watched the show. Right. Our parents had, like, it had been around for a long time. Yes, tradition. And, yeah. And, and if you say, like, well, well, as a, if, if you're rolling tape, if you're rolling film and you're like, well, you know, this thing has been around for 30 years. It's like, well, it's only been played 90, you know, 23 times. Right. Like, it just kind of. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, then things started getting easier on the production side. And I think a lot of the creativity, because if you were going to work on Frosty the Snowman, the, the original one, if you're being hired to work on that, you're probably being hired to work on that three years before it's oh, yeah. supposed to come out. Sure. For a thirty minute episode, like voice acting, mm. you know, all all of the all of all of the elements have to go in and then in the nineties, that's like dude, we're we're gonna produce this show. You and I are gonna talk for an hour. We're gonna cut. I'm gonna spend another hour in post production and then it is <laughs> out in the world yeah <laughs> like back in the day unless we were live yeah that was that was impossible right so i mean the world has made it a lot easier yeah. so but real quick i want to take a break so we can listen to some of these old trailers this is actually going to be a long break because it's christmas time and i'm going to just drop in as many as i can so enjoy on Sunday, December 4th, Burl Ives again tells the exciting new story of Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer on the General Electric Fantasy Hour. The date, Sunday, December 4th. Join Rudolph in a trip to the island of misfit toys. Meet Yukon Cornelius, the funniest prospector of the North. Again. Meet Santa's elves and hear seven original Christmas songs. Burl sings. Have a holly jolly Christmas. It's the best time of the year. I don't know if there'll be snow, but have a cup of cheer. It's a holly jolly Christmas special for the entire family. Don't miss Rudolph, Sunday, December 4th, in color on most of these stations. Thanks a lot. Merry Christmas. Jug Band Christmas. Monday at 8, 7 Central, a special holiday treat for the whole family when Jim Henson's marvelous Muppets bring Christmas to Frogtown Hollow in Emmett Otter's Jug Band Christmas. Good night. All right. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed that, man, because that, if that didn't get you in the Christmas mood, <laughs> I really <laughs> don't know what will. <laughs> yeah. So you were mentioning Frosty, you were mentioning how much the sequels suck, which, I mean, sometimes sequels make the series and sometimes they really kind of kill it. I, I, I'm i kind of, I mean, Frosty the Snowman returns in the 90s after yeah. the early <laughs> early to mid 60s, whenever that's the first time you, yeah. like, again, these, these people are grown, they don't remember, they don't have the magic. It's not the Sandlot anymore. Right. And I think that's what a lot of, 
not not to go not to go dark not to go sad but a lot of our christmas memories a lot of our christmas carols our tv specials our our holiday traditions mm -hmm. are really kind of based on and around the darkness that was world war ii yeah like i'll be home for christmas and and white christmas and those those sorts of songs and that sort of sentimentality is it, it, it is not a commercialized Bed Bath & Beyond jingle trying to make you buy stuff. It really, really is human yearning to, right. to be at a place where we were warm and safe and happy when we're not necessarily in those places. Yep. And so for us who <laughs> think – think god we've never had to be in war and probably not even all that hungry or cold even though you know it gets that way sometimes we have these memories that we look back upon and be like okay well that's that's warm that's home that's where i would like to be i, w I would like really like to remember that what about puff the magic dragon for me that was always on around christmas time do yeah. you remember that oh yeah i mean i looked I didn't find it in the in the archives, and then I found it obscurely. And they're like, it was always played around, but somewhere between Christmas and and, and Thanksgiving, and yeah. But yeah, Puff the Magic Dragon always was. It was on even quite as a, bit. a child. It was kind of a tearjerker. Sure, <laughs> like, poor Puff, man. <laughs> yeah, well, and I think that was just kind of the 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 way these things went, right? You had to have something to happen right to to make you care for the characters and then at the end everybody just dances and do a song together you know <laughs> that's that's how these things roll <laughs> dude santa claus is coming to town right where he goes and fights the heat meister and <laughs> heat miser yeah. i mean i'm the heat miser i mean <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah i mean it, <laughs> There's so many of those that, like, because, because again, they, especially with the stop motion ones, they kind of run together. Yeah. You get a little confused because you're like, oh, well, you know, was that the scene where they're all standing in the, in the snow? <laughs> but then you've always got Burl Ives walking around being like, okay, let me tell you a story about Christmas, <laughs> you know? <laughs> and that's, and it's not a, uh, we'll talk about it in a couple weeks, but. That's the entire intro <laughs> scene for Elf, where right. he's like, yeah. he's like, "Hey, Mister Narwhal," you know, like, <laughs> like just all these just kind of random characters popping out of nowhere, just being like, "Hey, what's going on?" I'll, I'll, I'm just going to be a sideline of the story, but I'm part of it. And uh, yet, then they make themselves kind of immortal. You know, there are, yeah. <laughs> I just I think about that setup too about. You know, you get Burl Lives, and he's narrating the story, and he's this kind of holly jolly s snowman, right? Sliding <laughs> around with his cardigan on. <laughs> and then you get Fred Astaire is doing the, the Santa Claus story, and he's like a postmaster delivering mail to the North Pole. And then Roger Miller, you know, hey, we got this uh, this new one we want to do about uh, a donkey. So, oh, cool. So, 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 what I get to be as a narrator? Oh, you get to be a donkey. Oh, well, great. <laughs> so before we drop out of the stop motion. Because we did talk about animation, but yeah. I think that's one of those things. You mentioned the 90s and their, their crappy actual animation. Because in the 90s, they were starting to get lazy with actual animation. And, and if you look at... It doesn't have to be Disney, but just look at old frame-by-frame -frame animation that they used to do. It was expensive, and they'd have to draw, like every frame yeah like half of you know eighths of seconds just move slight mm -hmm. motion and then the stop motion was exact exactly the same thing just yeah. in 3d yeah and then you have uh, nightmare before christmas oh yeah you know from 1993 which of course is not a tv special but it is most certainly 
hearkening back to those because yep. there's there's the discussion about whether it's a Halloween movie versus a Christmas movie because I think it was released close to Christmas yep. and it was supposed to be a Christmas movie but it's Get, it, yeah. in the last 20 years it's kind of pulled itself back into the Halloween zone but regardless the influence came what, from those Tim Burton was a huge fan of that stop motion style yeah yeah and and the, the the whole Christmas town scenes where he's running around I mean, is it's almost. I mean, you could take one of those scenes and drop it into one of the old shows, and it would work. Yep. So you know the the influence of that old stuff is just everywhere. Sure. I mean, you you don't you don't think about it. You don't see it. Sometimes the young and and the old don't mix because the the old ain't hip anymore. But yeah, it's all there, and. Yeah, well, it kind of goes with just like we were talking about with the Jim Henson stuff, right? I mean, things change, you know, things get better to some degree, but the heart and soul of it is what's important. And that's kind of the same deal with this stuff is, you know, it's going to mean different things to different people because, just like you said, it's tradition, right? Just like singing Away in a Manger is, is traditional because you grew up, you know, being around your family and and singing Silent Night or these songs, it's just a part of that tradition. These shows were that, and mm -hmm. you know, it, it's it's no different than seeing the the Great Pumpkin, you know, Charlie Brown special. Let you know that it's Halloween time, you know. <laughs> Which brings us to the Charlie Brown Christmas time. A absolutely, I, I was hoping I you'd mean... segue, segue into that. <laughs> I, dude, I was, I was working on it. I just, you know, like if, if, if you're going to follow a show like this, sometimes we empty both barrels in the first half, but we're, we're, we're solid into the second half. And we, we, well, you mentioned Star Wars and I was like, oh, we can't go there yet. So like, like cue, cue the little holiday special. There's still things to, to pay attention to. Oh, yeah. Don't get lost in the third act here. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, dude, the the Charlie Brown Christmas, the well, Great Pumpkin, yeah, you know the Great Pumpkin, yeah. And the thing the thing about Charlie Brown is there's the Charlie Brown thanks ha Halloween, great. But then there is the Thanksgiving, yep, which makes you just really want to reach in and just flick all of those kids in the head. <laughs> like <laughs> the Thanksgiving special. You remember the Thanksgiving oh, yeah. special. Everybody just invites their selves to his house. Yeah. And so he does the best he can to make a fake, make food for them. Yeah. And then they're not happy with it. And he's, he's sorry. I'm like, <laughs> Oh no, 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 no. <laughs> I didn't call you. You called me. <laughs> I did the best I could. So how about everybody just step yeah. off the property? Yeah, now? yeah, just step <laughs> like... off. <laughs> <laughs> but then it gets to <laughs> then it gets to Christmas time, and it's a whole lot more heartfelt. I mean, Thanksgiving, yeah, that's like that's a you have to kind of give that the benefit of the doubt because, but yeah, Christmas, right. Every, it's it's again that's home it's everybody's home everybody's friends yeah <laughs> he has to read war and peace doesn't he <laughs> over christmas break yeah <laughs> <laughs> oh no, nothing like like nothing nothing says christmas yeah like like Russian tragedy in a thousand pages. You know? <laughs> like... Well, since you're going to be off for all this time, here you can you can read this for when we come back. <laughs> oh, dude, I forgot so... to tell you, we actually <laughs> talk about another special. Um, I just totally forgot about this, and I don't know if I brought this up before, but. We actually got to go see Emmett Otter's Jug Band Christmas in a theater. Oh, wow. A couple of years ago. 
They showed it in Nashville, so we drove two and a half hours to go watch him and her <laughs> Jeff Van Christmas on the screen. And they had a lost episode of Fraggle Rock that was a Christmas special, and they showed it beforehand. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's it, it was never aired. And it's like, wow, what? why would you not show a Christmas special of Fraggle Rock? So I didn't see anything in there that said, hmm. Weird. <laughs> yeah. So I, I don't know, but I just I totally forgot about that. But they had, they did they had the a, a unaired episode of Fraggle Rock that was a Christmas special, and that was kind of cool. Yeah, you know, sometimes they just filmed it and then just couldn't get the airtime. That was what we were talking about earlier. Is like, well, <laughs> we we've got a show. There, the show t- comes back and say we don't have a slot. So then, like, maybe yeah. shopping around. Um. And just saying that that you there's unaired episodes and stuff. So there's uh, with the with COVID and the death of retail or the death of different things. Um, I read a couple of days ago that there is a uh, there was, but it's the oldest video store video rental store in Austin that's held on. Like it it survived a blockbuster. It survived mm. everything else. And they finally decided to close. I think the owner decided to retire and just wasn't going to have to deal with it. But they have a massive library of out of print and unreleased wow. and just stuff. They're just they're 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 a huge thing. And I, I've heard their name many times in the past. And apparently Alamo bought them, hmm. bought not not the company, but just bought their inventory. Like right. bought their library cool. and was like, okay, we're just gonna, we're just gonna store it over here in this one theater, and then we'll start just playing stuff, yeah. <laughs> having 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 uh marathons. So uh, that's a good thing because there is a lot. I mean, we talk about VHS and video and and old stuff that was on TV. Like again, I haven't seen Puff the Magic Dragon in that's been a while, probably thirty years. Yeah, and or even longer. And I don't know where it is. I'm sure if you go on YouTube, it's there. Oh, Somebody's yeah. going to be like, her, her, her. But no, you don't <laughs> see it on TV. It's like, it's certainly not a, a special anymore. Um, it doesn't make you like perk up your ears and be like, well, on Tuesday, I'm going to stay home. You know? <laughs> so oh. so I, I know we're heading towards the end here. And I'm just going to say it. Do we even bring up? The Star Wars holiday special? <laughs> well, what I was going to say to segue into that, because you mentioned that, oh. is is some somewhere along the lines, because I think Star Wars were always holiday movies, or, or, or summer movies. They yeah. were summer releases. Yeah. Because Jaws was the first blockbuster, and Lucas and Spielberg were yep. making out in the 70s. So... <laughs> um, <laughs> And so then, you know, you had summer blockbusters, but then, then at, at some point, you know, Star Wars became a Christmas tradition. Like it, it, some network would be playing Star Wars. Yeah. You mentioned the hol- <laughs> the, the, the holiday <laughs> special, and the the answer to that question is I just I can't. But <laughs> we've got we've got Mandalorian, and and Mandalorian is such that we have to because oh man. Uh, the, the way man the way Mandalorian keeps playing out is I think we're going to have a holiday special redux that that sets all things right. Uh, maybe <laughs> because <laughs> maybe. Uh... But here here's the thing. I have a philosophy. I I, I have a thought. I I have a. So. The the thing about Star Wars, is. God, it pisses me off even having to, to, to bring politics into it. it. It sucks. But do you remember a few years ago when the uh, President Barack Obama said to all these small business owners, well, you didn't build that because you built that on the shoulders of other people. And all the small business owners were furious because right. he was yeah an ass. George Lucas didn't build that. Right. 
George George Lucas wrote that, and he had some really great ideas for direction. But if it wasn't for John Williams, it, absolutely, <laughs> yep, you know Spielberg. If it wasn't for even Harrison Ford being like, I'm not saying that, right? <laughs> like there there was there was a whole lot of things that happened in spite of Lucas's genius. Well, that the, made Star Wars what it was. The whole I- fact, ILM there's... stuff, man. I mean, if you didn't have I, I, the ILM original crew involved and the sound design, all that stuff. I mean, I mean, yeah, it was it was Lucas's, you know, brainchild. But you know, he did exactly what Tarantino does, right? He takes favorite things of of different things and mashes it together. I mean, Star Wars is dogfights <laughs> of World War Two. You're fighting, Ooh. hello, stormtroopers, <laughs> Darth Vader. You know, I mean, it, it's it's you know, it's, and we're not downplaying it because we love Star Wars. But at the same time, we love it. You're exactly He's also right. had just as many bad ideas as good. Just and look at the prequels, some, right? <laughs> and and, so, and sometimes people have to talk him off a ledge, and sometimes he won't let himself be talked off a ledge. Right. I think that with Star Wars Holiday Special, he's like, well. <laughs> If I'm on my way to to being the greatest, I also have to be the worst. Like I have to land on both <laughs> sides. Like 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 if there's a heartbeat, ba boom, I'm here and here at the same time. Like <laughs> like I'm good and I suck all at once because that's the only explanation. Because well, oh, dude, uh, apparently he didn't have much to do with the holiday special. He had to have, unless well, it was just you, con- contracts you, and people saying, "Well, then I'll show up." Well, I think anybody with anybody with any sense would have decided that this is a bad idea from the beginning. Well, and that's the thing about it. he even tried to have all the copies of it destroyed. So, <laughs> I mean, he did. He literally wanted he wanted to do like they did with you know with the with original Nos- Nosferatu, yeah. And, and <laughs> he he literally was wanting all of it destroyed. And the fact of, that it's out there on YouTube to wa- where you can watch it is pretty wild because they thought they got them all. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, dude, it's the weirdest thing. Watching. If if you folks listen, if you've never seen the Star Wars Holly Holly, uh, Holly Holiday Special. I, 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 it, I'd say go check it out. It's on YouTube. You can check it out. But it is the weirdest. It is the weirdest thing I think I've ever seen. And and like I said, with the thing with Lucas is whether or not he actually wrote it or directed it or yeah, I think he had uh, he green he greenlit it. He certainly let it happen. Yeah, because here's here's how I know this. Here's how I know this. There is a little little band of of sisters out of Tyler, Texas, and the, the name of the band is Isley, and they play alternative rock and roll. Mm-hmm. It's three sisters, and they sing harmonies, and they sound like angels. They're they started their band under the name Moss Isley. Yeah, and before they made four dollars for a cover charge, they were hit by Lucasfilm with a cease and desist for using property. Wow. wow. And so, yeah, the holiday special. But this is what what year was this? Is this in the nineties? It was in the nineties. Well, see, but still, Star Wars. I mean, you got to remember this is right after the very first movie. So Lucas had the rights to. The toys. So the rest of it belonged to Fox, right? 20th, 20th Century Fox. So I don't know, man. I mean, the, the, I don't, I don't, <laughs> he had to have consented in some way. <laughs> I kind of look at it like I do the Kiss movie, right? Hey, it was there. Hannah Barbera wants to make a movie with Kiss in it, and, it was, and they want it to be like Star Wars meets A Hard Day's Night. And it's anything but that, <laughs> right? <laughs> so, hey, George, we want to take you know some of the original cast members and do a holiday special. Yeah, okay, go ahead. Who, who you got in? We're going to have Harvey Corman in. Oh, yeah, yeah, I love Harvey, Harvey Corman. Go ahead. And then he sees it and goes, what did y'all do? <laughs> Dude, 
It really does. It, it is. It is quite painful. It really is. I mean, it's hard. It's heartbreakingly painful. <laughs> the the fact that <laughs> the fact that Chewbacca's grandfather gets in that booth and is basically, it's basically like I don't know, a porn station <laughs> that he's sitting in. It's like a virtual reality where he's getting all hot and bothered by. I don't know who it was, Lena Horn or somebody. It's like, wow, <laughs> this is the weirdest thing ever. And then Jefferson and Starship comes out and plays a song. It's just like, what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's Princess Leia singing songs. Oh, that song at the A time for peace. <laughs> <laughs> it is. It is not good, guys. It is not good. No, it's on, not. Don't, don't, don't go watch the Mandalorian though, because the Mandalorian. Oh, rocks man and i think i honestly dude you were talking like, we have been talking about him and otter we've been talking about jim henson the, the puppets and the muppets i posted on facebook a couple weeks ago how it's amazing how a, a guy without a face yep and a puppet that doesn't talk yep just completely snows to multi huge film franchises but i i think favreau has it right and i think Mm -hmm. i think it's funny because uh what's his paoli the other guy yeah um those those two guys seem to me like favreau had it right with with iron man and the avengers he had it right yeah was don't f with it just don't mess with it the characters are right Mm -hmm. just Make them look good and give them cool lines to say. Because to me, Mandalorian is a new, it's, it's the new, I, I have to sit there and watch it. Mm-hmm. My kids, my, my younger daughter, she doesn't like Star Wars, but she loves Mandalorian. Man. Okay. Baby Yoda. Oh, yeah. Two and a, or one and a half seasons of having not said a <laughs> single word. <laughs> And he is more compelling than most of the characters in any of the prequels or sequel series. Yep. Right? And the fact that they didn't go CGI, right. and the fact that they did use puppets. Yeah. Now, I'm used to being disappointed. So, like, they might come out with a holiday special next week where <laughs> Mando's dancing around or something. And I'll be like, well, There's it that. was good while it lasted. But... <laughs> At least it's been good while it lasts, because yeah. I've been having a real good time with that. Yeah, man, fantastic! It, it's all going to come to a head, though. The, the last episode, you're, you know, they'll reintroduce Jar Jar Binks or something. You know, it's just like, oh. <laughs> the thing is, though, here, here's, here's, here. In Favreau's hands, yeah, I trust it absolutely. Because he reintroduces Jar Jar Binks, and he comes in, and he's like. I messed up. <laughs> like, maybe he's got some armor or a robot hand, and he's, like, doing the whole Winter Soldier thing. He's like, man, I messed up, and I've got I, I've got, to, I've got to fix things. Like, <laughs> may, maybe that will work. <laughs> he's, yeah. I don't know. He's but... on a roll, man. This this last episode was amazing. Yeah, I'm, I'm, oh. yeah. <laughs> I'm down. Well, man, I think that has about run us out of time. Yeah, it we has. spent the last few minutes talking about the Star Wars, but <laughs> the dude, dude, with, even with the commercials, I mean, this is one of those reasons why going back and watching the first Star Wars, the proper Star Wars, the 1977 Star Wars, I'm not going to call it episode four because... Pfft, yeah, um, I agree. Like, it can get boring somewhere between the second and the third act because there's too many commercials when they're trying to fill that time and that slot. Yeah. And then whenever you actually sit down and watch it, the commercials aren't there, so it just kind of plays through. And you're like, wait, this isn't boring at all. Yeah. You know, it's a three-hour presentation in on a two-hour movie. Yeah. Because they – That's how they make the money. Commercials. Yeah. But, yeah, that was – thing it's like oh watch a star wars you watch star wars all the time i'm watching it again mom <laughs> so <laughs> yeah i grew up watching you know when when rudolph the red nose reindeer would come on you'd always get that commercial where it was the a ten. let's see what was it back then bell south commercial <laughs> where 
the family's calling the grandpa, grandpa, and it's long distance. We're calling all the way from Wisconsin. Can you hear us? <laughs> yeah, sounds great. Have a good holiday. I mean, it was one of those staple commercials that was on every year at Christmas time. You can call long distance. You know, it was <laughs> the start of all that, right? For me, it was that Folgers commercial where the kid shows up home from college or whatever. Oh, yeah, yeah. Car, car full of presents. Yeah. And, like, his little sister wakes up, and he's like, she's like, you're home. <laughs> and, and, like, as a grown-up, I'm like, okay, so – is he coming home from college? Because he's got a car full of presents. What is he doing? Like, he's... <laughs> he's selling drugs on the side or something. <laughs> Somewhere. Like, he's got money. Like, but, no, nah, I mean, like, no. And I don't I don't even mean that really cynically. I'm like, dude, what is he doing for a living? Because he's, right. he's making something. He's, he's got a car full of presents, and he's home. <laughs> he's a college kid, and he's bought presents. Something wrong here. <laughs> not good <laughs> he, it's like those boxes are not full of laundry like Merry Christmas mom right. like pull up in the end and like dump it in the laundry <laughs> mm. alright man let's go ahead and close this one down and we will see you guys next week we love you if you don't hear us next week Merry Christmas keep it awesome <laughs>